Welcome back, everyone. We're diving deep today into a story that has the financial world buzzing. Yeah, this one has it all really... Uh... Oh, it does. It's got drama intrigue and a whole lot of unanswered questions. Yeah. We're talking about Supermicro, the tech giant. Huge company. Huge company, and their very dramatic split with their auditor, Ernst & Young. Yeah, and the timing of it all is what's really got everyone talking. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Imagine this. Your company's doing great stocks through the roof, and then bam. Your auditor basically says, You can't vouch for these numbers. Right. So it's not just a disagreement. It's a full-blown walkout. And that is really rare, like almost unheard of, especially before they've even finished the audit. So our mission today, folks, is to untangle this mess. We'll be digging through company filings, expert commentary, even some juicy short seller action. Buckle up. It's going to be a wild ride. Let's start with the 8K filing that Supermicro dropped. Yeah. It's basically the company's official way of saying, Hey, everyone, listen up. We've got news. And that news was... EY resigned. They resigned. Not just that, but they were only hired in March. This mm. was their first audit for Supermicro, and they bailed before even issuing a report. That's the part that really raises eyebrows, right? right? Like, you hire a contractor to remodel your kitchen. They start tearing down walls, and suddenly they're like, we can't finish this. We don't trust the foundation. And the investors are left standing there with a half-demolished kitchen. Exactly. And that's what's got the market so spooked, because EY didn't just quietly slip out the back door. Oh, no. They went full scorched earth with this letter to the SEC. Yeah, and the language they used was very deliberate. They said they're unwilling to be associated with Supermicro's financial statements. Ouch. That's a serious burn coming from an auditor whose entire job is to assure people that the numbers are trustworthy. It is. When they say the opposite, it's basically a vote of no confidence in the entire company. And it gets even spicier. EY also raised concerns about Supermicro's commitment to integrity and ethical values. Now, this goes beyond just messing up a decimal point, right? This is about the very soul of the company. It's like they're questioning the company's moral compass. Exactly. And this actually hints at something very specific. When they invoke integrity and ethical values, they're pointing towards what's called the COSO framework. The COSO framework. Yeah, it's a gold standard for internal controls and corporate governance. And EY is basically suggesting that Supermicro might have a stomach problem, not just a few isolated issues. So not just nitpicky accounting stuff, but a whole culture problem. Potentially. Now, Supermicro obviously disagrees with EY's decision. They said their internal review isn't over but they are taking the concern seriously. It's a delicate balance. They're pushing back, but also acknowledging that something might be wrong. Like walking a tightrope. And there's another layer here. Supermicro agreed to consider the findings of their special committee, which means they might have to take action later, even if they disagree with EY now. So they're not just brushing this under the rug? Not at all. This has the potential to get very messy very quickly. And here's where things get really interesting. Remember Hindenburg research? the short seller who targeted Supermicro a few months ago. Ah, yes, Hindenburg, always stirring the pot. They do. They're known for their aggressive tactics, basically betting big on a company's stock going down. And their report on Supermicro was a bombshell. It's a whopping 19,000 words. They really went all in. 19,000 words. That's practically a novel. It shows how much work they put into building their case. But within that mountain of text, some accusations stand out more than others. So cut to the chase. What were the most explosive claims that Hindenburg dropped? One of the biggest bombshells was the allegation of potential export violations. Hindenburg claimed Supermicro's exports of high-tech components to Russia actually tripled since the war in Ukraine began potentially breaking sanctions. Oh, that's playing with fire, especially in the current geopolitical climate. If true, that's not just bad business. It's potentially illegal. Right. Exactly. The implications go way beyond a simple PR headache. We're talking potential legal action from multiple governments, not to mention the reputational damage of being seen as aiding a country engaged in a very controversial conflict. Hindenburg also went after some of Supermicro's dealings with their suppliers. Mm -hmm. That's where things got a bit more, shall we say, family-oriented? That's putting it mildly. Hindenburg pointed to nearly $1 billion in payments made to two suppliers, Ablecom and CompuWare. What makes this raise eyebrows is that both suppliers are controlled by family members of Supermicro's CEO, Charles Liang. Hold up. Almost a billion dollars went to companies essentially owned by the CEO's family. That's got conflict of interest written all over it. It certainly raises a lot of questions. Hindenburg argued that this created a circular flow of business that could undermine shareholder interests. 
Basically, were these deals made for the benefit of Supermicro or for the personal gain of those close to the CEO? That's the suspicion Hindenburg was playing on. So we've got potential sanctions violations, questionable deals with family-linked companies. It's starting to feel like a corporate soap opera. How did Supermicro respond to all this? Supermicro fired back, calling Hindenburg's report inaccurate and misleading. They defended their relationship with Ablecom and CompuWare, saying these are long-standing partners and the deals were all above board. Classic, nothing to see here, defense. Yeah. But if they're so confident, why not release more details to back up their claims? That's what many people are wondering. Their response was pretty general, lacking specific evidence to counter Hindenburg's detailed claims. This lack of transparency has only fueled skepticism and added to the uncertainty swirling around Supermicro. And then hanging over all this, we have EY walking away. It's impossible to ignore the timing. You have to wonder if EY's concerns were triggered by some of the same red flags Hindenburg raised. The timing is certainly suggestive. Remember, EY specifically mentioned concerns about governance transparency and completeness of communications. Those concerns align perfectly with the issues Hindenburg highlighted, particularly those dealings with suppliers tied to the CEO's family. Could it be that EY saw some internal evidence that corroborated what Hindenburg was alleging? We can't say for sure without seeing EY's work papers. However, the timing and the specific nature of their concerns strongly suggest they might have stumbled upon something that made them deeply uncomfortable, something serious enough to warrant this very public breakup. Welcome back to our deep dive into the Supermicro saga. We left off with this bombshell EY walking away, Hindenburg dropping a massive report. It's like a Wall Street thriller. Oh, it is. It's got all the elements, high stakes, big money, and now we're starting to see potential cracks in the facade. Right. And speaking of cracks, let's talk about that stock plunge. Mm -hmm. Supermicro shares tanked 35% after EY's announcement. That's billions of dollars in market value just gone like that. Yeah. That's the real world impact of this kind of news. It shows just how much investors rely on the word of auditors. It's like that seal of approval that says, hey, you can trust these guys. And when that seal is broken, the whole system starts to crumble. Exactly. And now we have to ask the big question, can Supermicro recover from this? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? They're facing an uphill battle for sure. So let's break it down. What are the biggest challenges they're facing right now? Well, first and foremost, they need to find a new auditor. And that's not gonna be easy after EY's very public exit. It's like trying to find a date after your ex just wrote a tell-all book about you. Pretty much. And then there's the whole issue of regaining investor trust. That's going to take time and a lot of transparency. So what can they actually do to start rebuilding that trust? Well, for starters, they need to address Hindenburg's accusations head on, not just with vague denials, but with specific evidence. It's like that saying sunlight is the best disinfectant. Exactly. They need to shed light on those questionable dealings with suppliers, the potential export violations, everything. But isn't there a risk that by digging into these things, They'll just unearth more problems. There's always that risk. But at this point, the cover-up is worse than the crime. Transparency is their only real option. So it's like a rip-off the Band-Aid approach. Yeah. Painful, but maybe less damaging in the long run. Exactly. And they also need to go beyond just words. They need to demonstrate real change in their actions in their corporate culture. So it's not just about saying the right things. It's about actually doing the right thing. That's the key. And that's what investors will be watching for. So essentially, they need to prove that they've learned their lesson and that they're committed to doing better. Right. This whole saga has been a wake up call, not just for Supermicro, but for the entire tech industry. It's like a reminder that even the most successful companies can have skeletons in their closet. And that those skeletons can come tumbling out at any moment. So for our listeners out there who are maybe thinking about investing in tech companies or any company for that matter, what's the takeaway here? The takeaway is simple. Do your homework. Don't just buy into the hype. Look beyond the flashy headlines and dig deeper into the company's financials, their governance practices, their track record. It's like being a detective. You got to follow the evidence wherever it leads. Exactly. And don't be afraid to ask tough questions. Demand transparency from the companies you're investing in. Because it's the end of the day. It's your money on the line. It is. And you have the right to know what you're getting into. We've explored the accusations, the fallout, and the potential path to recovery. But this story is far from over. Oh, absolutely. There are still so many unanswered questions. In our final part, we're going to step back and look at the wider impact of this saga on the tech industry and on investor confidence as a whole. We're back for the final act of our Supermicro deep dive. We've gone through the accusations, the fallout, 
and the big question of recovery. And honestly, this whole thing feels bigger than just one company. Yeah. Right? It does. It feels like we've stumbled onto something much bigger. Like we're seeing a shift in how we think about corporate trust and accountability. Yeah, it's like that saying, too big to fail. We're starting to realize that maybe no company is immune to scrutiny. Right. Size doesn't matter when it comes to ethics and transparency. Exactly. And I think that's a good thing. How so? Well, it levels the playing field. It means that even the biggest players have to be accountable to their investors and to the public. So like a wake-up call for the whole system. It is. Yeah. And it's forcing everyone to step up their game. Companies need to be more transparent. Auditors need to be more vigilant. And investors need to be more informed. It's like a chain reaction. One event triggers a whole cascade of changes. Exactly. And in the long run, that could lead to a more stable and trustworthy market. But let's be real. Change doesn't happen overnight. No, it doesn't. This is going to be a long process. And there will be bumps along the way. Definitely. But the important thing is that the conversation has started. Right. We're finally starting to ask the tough questions. And that's what will ultimately lead to real progress. So what advice would you give to our listeners out there who are trying to make sense of all this? What are the key takeaways? Well, first of all, don't panic. This is a complex situation, and it's going to take time to fully unfold. Right. We're still in the early stages of this story. Exactly. So stay informed, but don't get swept up in the hype. Easy to say, hard to do when you're watching your portfolio time. Ah, uh, I know. Yeah. But remember that the market is always going to be volatile. There will be ups and downs. So don't make any rash decisions. Exactly. And most importantly, do your own research. Don't just blindly follow the herd. Right. Think for yourself, be critical, and always be skeptical. Skepticism is healthy, especially when it comes to investing. It's like that saying, trust but verify. Exactly. Don't just take things at face value. Dig a little deeper. Ask questions. And remember that you have the right to demand transparency yeah. from the companies you're investing in. Because at the end of the day, it's your hard-earned money on the line. It is. And you deserve to know what you're getting into. We've covered a lot of ground in this deep dive. We've seen how a seemingly minor accounting issue can spiral into a full-blown corporate crisis. And we've learned that even the biggest companies are not invincible. They're all vulnerable to the same forces of accountability and transparency. And that's a good thing. It means that the system is working as it should. It's a reminder that we all have a role to play in holding companies accountable. We can't just sit back and expect things to magically fix themselves. We need to be active participants in this system, demanding better from the companies and institutions that shape our world. Well said. And remember, folks, this is just the beginning. The super micro saga is far from over. Stay tuned. We'll be following this story closely and bringing you all the latest developments as they happen. Until next time, stay informed, stay vigilant, and most importantly, stay curious. That's it for our deep dive into the super micro saga. Thanks for joining us on...